Seeing none, the member from Stormont Dundas and South Bend Gary on member statement. All right, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I want to give a big shout out to the great people of my riding in Stormont, Dundas, and South Glengarry, who time and time again donate their time and money to bring the spirit of Christmas to all. Yesterday, the South Stormont Fire Department held their annual uh, food drive, where people in the community were so generous. And at the Benson Centre, the Benson Group, along with the Cornwall Colts, had held the annual charity hockey game, raising $4,500 for the St. Vincent de Paul Society. And in the morning, the Optimist Club of Chrysler held their breakfast with Santa. Speaker in the community after community, volunteers gathered to help make this time of year better for all, especially those in need. On Friday, we had the schools involved, bringing in thousands of pounds of food that go towards the food banks and for baskets for individual families. The City of Cornwall, along with many of the small communities, in my riding, organized Santa Claus parades where local businesses, service clubs, and individuals come together to truly put on a great show for the little ones. Speaker, there's so much more. The CP holiday train raising funds for hung hunger awareness, the Salvation Army, Christmas food baskets, Sparky Toy Drive by the City of Cornwall's Fire Department, the Snowsuit Fund, Christmas Day meals for those that are alone or in need, and much, much more. The speakers, with great pride, they want to thank all the volunteers of Stormont Dundas and South Glengarry for the huge difference they make in people's lives, whether it be at Christmas or throughout the year. Thank you. Thank you. Further members' statements. The member from Windsor to Speaker, all I want for Christmas and Hansard please record this comment, is a day without heckling in our provincial parliament. I want to speak today about decorum here in this, our legislative forum. I'd like to challenge a parliamentary tradition to give our partisanship more acceptable definition. Now, I may be committing political heresy, but I want to see a better example of our democracy. No one was elected to come here and do nothing but heckle. So why do we turn into Mr. and Mrs. Hyde and then Dr. Jekyll? It's one thing to bellow out our dissent, but what about those we came here to represent? Why do we look across the aisle and see a minister or a critic as a conspirator? And then turn our daily question period into a circus of political theater. Why not for just one experimental day for go making what amounts sometimes as political hay? Why not a civilized discussion? there still be room for political repercussion. Let's go out on a limb and leave it to trust. Why pretend arguments from the other side only leave us with disgust? Just one day, no heckling, a more collegial reckoning. Why must we always test the speaker's resolve? Why do we get so personally involved that we act as children yelling at recess out in the yard? hoping not to get named by the speaker and then barred. Let's for <laughs> once in this parliamentary chamber, just one day, calmer and tamer. We'd still have questions asked and then answered. It would still be there in black and white on the pages of Hansard. I wrote that. <laughs> Further members, see now they're heckling the speaker again. Fur, further members, David, the member from Eglinton Lawrence. Hello, oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to pay tribute to the Toronto FC Soccer Club. Uh, as you know, uh, this uh, team, uh, which represents Toronto but also represents Ontario and Canada, won the MLS Cup uh, uh, yes on uh, Saturday, Saturday afternoon. And uh, this is the first time a Canadian team has won that uh, cup, which has competitors all over North America. It is a wonderful team made up of players from all over the world, including Canadians. It has great superstars like Josie Altidore and Jovinko Sebastiano, Sebastiano Jovinko. And it has incredible fans. I don't know if you've ever been to a game or seen the uh, FC on TV. The fans are so enthusiastic passionate, real, and the players and management really appreciate the fans. And I think that is uh, quite unique in sport where the fans are as big a part of the team as the players are. So hats off to this wonderful team of uh, young men from all over the world who uh, won the championship, and it's a tribute to their uh, courage, their bravery, 
and especially, as you know, they lost last year the same team in shootout, the Seattle Sounders. So this year, uh, we brought the, the Cup back to uh, Canada and Toronto, so hats off to Toronto FC. Congratulations, Toronto FC. Thank you. The, the Thank you. Further member statements, member from Perth Wellington. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, I have the honour of serving 11 municipalities, including the counties of Perth Wellington. Last week, I had the pleasure of attending the Perth County Warden's election and inaugural reception. For those who don't know, the warden presides over county council, a sort of mayor of mayors who helps bring together the shared interests of municipalities and advocate with one voice for Perth County. It's a challenging role that invites that involves managing the county's budget and assets and charting out a strategic plan to build success in the future. The new warden of West Perth, the new warden, West Perth Mayor Walter McKenzie, is in the unique position of serving in this role twice. He was previously elected as warden in 1995. On the subject of Walter's long political career, St. Mary's Mayor Al Strathy remarked, Walter has been sort of a mentor of mine for a long time, a political person, and recently I believe he, he celebrated 35 years of political service. Someone should have told him a, a life sentence in Canada is only 25 years. It's also like, I'd also like to thank the outgoing warden, Merch Snyder, for his excellent work over the last two years. He worked hard to expand Perth County's agricultural and other key industries and help make our community an even better place to live and work. As County Council prepares for a new season session, I look forward to working with the new warden, all county members, and dedicated staff. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Speaker. And my statement today is the Liberal Road Maintenance Program, Winter Road Maintenance Program, isn't working. Here's some of the stories that we regularly see in our local newspapers across northern Ontario. Highway 101 opens after multiple collisions, multiple deaths. Victim identified in fatal collision near Shaplow. OPP identify man killed in Wawa area single accident. Man dies in collision on Highway 617 north of Wawa. Two killed in crash near Massey. Three others hospitalized. Driver identified in fatal Highway 17 accident. Fatal crash closes Highway 17 at Whitefish. OPP investigates fatal incident in Elliott Lake. Two men died in head-on collision in Sudbury. Multiple vehicle crashes closes Highway 17. Three vehicle crashes north of the Sioux. Two vehicle collisions snarl Highway 17. I think you get the picture, Mr. Speaker. And it just isn't working. When are they going to change the winter road maintenance program? Just recently, Paul Beauregard, a truck driver, showed an incident that happened across uh, one of our highways in northern Ontario. Absolutely unacceptable that people should be put under those circumstances. My friend and colleague from Timisman Cochran, South Tomogamine, they lost a death just a few weeks ago. Up in Coppercliff, my mem the member from Nickelbelt, they lost some deaths. Highway 101, 144, 17, and 129 are all under winter road maintenance concerns. And just this morning in McCarroll, another death. Enough is enough. Thank you. The member, students, the member from Etobicoke North. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, pleased to take this opportunity to speak about a number of remarkable investments that are being made in Etobicoke North, uh, some of which are detailed, Speaker, uh, in my calendar, which I am not currently using as a prop, which will be distributed across the entire riding. These include, for example, the $2 billion exp uh, expansion of Finch uh, of transportation in my riding, the Finch West LRT, which has eight stops, Speaker, eight stops within my riding all the way from Humber College, Highway 27, Westmore, Martin Grove, Albion Road, Stevenson, Kipling, and Islington. This also includes, Speaker, uh, a massive infrastructure expansion of Etobicoke General Hospital, part of the William Osler Health System. We're looking at a $400 million expansion. This will, Speaker, quadruple quadruple the floor space, the footprint of that hospital. There are a number of other uh, initiatives, uh, including, for example, the, the massive uptake of free tuition uh, for folks making less than $50,000 a year for two- to four-year college and university tuition. 
particularly welcome, of course, at Humber College. Uh, speaker, there are a number of developments. Uh, as you will know, January 1, 2018, minimum wage hits $14. And what's especially welcome, and I'm very pleased to share with as a doctor, is the expansion, a uh, massive expansion of pharma care, biggest in a generation. We're looking at, as you know, January 1, 2018, zero to 25 years of age, medications, 4,400 of them will be free. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. And the member did draw my attention to the fact that he read from his calendar, which indeed it is a prop, and he won't use it again. The member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Yes, well, thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> it's an honour to report on the world-class service uh, at St. Mary's Regional Cardiac Care Centre in Kitchener. Speaker, this weekend we learned that St. Mary's was one of only three hospitals out of the 38 cardiac centres to rank better than the national average on all quality indicators in a new Canadian Institute for Health information report. The hospital's record for both successful bypasses and valve replacement well surpassed most other providers. As Chief of Cardiovascular Services Dr. Brian McNamara indicated, the national recognition is a team effort and everybody has congratulations in order. Surgeons, nurses, orderlies and those in admin all to be congratulated. Speaker, last alone, St. Mary's Cardiac Centre performed 5,400 cath procedures. 850 bypass and valve surgeries, and 590 pacemaker insertions, as well as 10,000 outpatient clinic visits. Dr. McNamara makes it clear that from the vigorous triage of patients before surgery to the procedures themselves and through excellent post-surgical care, credit is due to all who boost patient outcomes at St. Mary's. But they're always looking to do more, Speaker. I would add that uh, behind our world-class cardiac staff, there is a very supportive St. Mary's Hospital Foundation. I want to especially thank our generous community and support for their generosity in supporting St. Mary's cardiac care. I, of course, encourage all who want to support our nationally recognized cardiac care center to scroll over to supportstmary's.ca, where money raised is lives saved. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Speaker. And uh, tomorrow night. Uh, families across Ontario and across Ottawa South, of course, will be lighting the first candle of Hanukkah. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to extend to my friends in Ottawa, Rabbi uh, Sher and Rabbi Volka, uh, Congregation Aziki Madas, all the families uh, that are in that congregation, indeed all the families across Ottawa and across Ontario who will be celebrating. And uh, I wish for all of them a joyous time with family. Uh, peace and happiness. Uh, speaker, I, I also represent a riding that have, has families from over 125 different countries that speak 90 languages, that practice dozens of faiths. I feel very fortunate to represent the, the riding of Ottawa South. And you know, we, we live together, we work together, and we celebrate together. And definitely tomorrow night, we will all celebrate together. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further members' statements, the member from Perry Sound, Ms. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. During the Christmas season, many of us give to those less fortunate. I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about the Table Soup Kitchen Foundation in Huntsville, which operates a soup kitchen, food bank, exchange store, and the only men's shelter in Perry Sound, Muskoka. While all these services are very important, today I want to focus on the shelter. It opened one year ago this month, but its, but its future is already in jeopardy. The shelter is funded exclusively by donations, and right now they are facing a decision about whether they can afford to stay open after December 31st. It is a small shelter with eight beds, but as I said, it is the only shelter for homeless men in the area. Over the past year, this shelter has hosted 80 men. It offers not only a warm place to sleep, but meals, access to laundry facilities, and a sense of community to the men who stay there. The shelter opens daily at 6 p.m., and the men are required to leave by 8 a.m. The Foundation would love to be able to offer day programs, but right now they're focused on keeping the doors open. Many local businesses support this shelter. I want to recognize that just last week, the Huntsville Canadian Tire store donated $10,000 wow. to the Table Soup Kitchen. To, to donate, to, to help save the men's shelter, visit www.thetablefoundation.ca. I want to encourage everyone to not only shop locally this holiday season, but give locally and support important local charities like the Table Soup Kitchen Foundation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Thank you. I'd like to thank all members for their statements. It's